Welcome to Jerry Beckett's Industrial Manufacturing Podcast. We are excited to have our second podcast today. This is the second podcast in our series of podcasts dealing with recession readiness, strategies to take the lead. We are excited to have Steve Holliday with us today. My name is Johanna and I'm a partner at the firm and I focus my practice on serving national and international industrial manufacturing clients with a focus on automotive and mobility. Steve, great to have you. How about Thanks. you give us a quick overview of your background? Thanks for having me, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here with you and your listeners. Well, I lead our CIO advisory services practice. You know how companies can sometimes struggle with determining a technology path to help optimize growth and or efficiency? Well, I work with these companies and their management teams to help identify and implement technology and business process improvements. The result is a company that is future ready, efficient, and effective. My background consists of industry experience in business operations, strategic process improvement, and information technology. I have over 20 years of industrial manufacturing experience and 10 years between financial services and wholesale distribution. My approach to technology is from a business perspective. I grew up in operations management, both in industrial and in service businesses. I moved between operations leadership and business process improvement as I rose into higher level positions and or changed industries. In Lean Six Sigma, I was trained to look for low cost, no cost improvements to raise process capabilities and then to use technology as a game changer. Great to have you here, Steve. Let's dive right in. We are hearing conflicting information about how manufacturing might be affected by the changing economic winds. Do you have any thoughts about analysis we might undertake to understand the potential impact these headwinds might have on our business? Great question, Joe. I'm a really big believer in using data and analysis, even if the analysis is a little bit more qualitative, to understand the challenges and the decisions that are needed. First question is, what is the problem we are trying to solve? If we were to model some different revenue scenarios, do we think that any change would be felt evenly across the board? Or do we have some markets or product lines that are more recession-proof? Make some assumptions about what changes you might expect in the top line by product and market. Then run multiple scenarios. What if revenues were down 10%? How about 20%? How about 30%? Flow these through the income statement. What assumptions or scenarios might play out with regards to cost? How might we in expect inflation to affect variable costs? What materials will be more expensive to the business? How much? What about fixed costs? Can we run some sensitivity analyses and identify problem spots? Can we model these changes? Are there general administration costs which can be cut? What about discretionary spending? Are there any areas that are not essential? If you haven't already Prioritize programs and spending as conditions change. Throttle back low priority costs and fund those that are future building. Are there any fixed costs to attack? What happens to variable costs? What happens to labor when volumes are down? These analyses will inform the areas on which we need to focus. Performing sensitivity analyses on the top line will allow us to see how underlying costs change and can help us understand key thresholds we will want to monitor. Our biggest challenge is that the relationship between revenues and costs are a complex multivariate equation. These are not simple one factor at a time changes. Your modeling needs to take this into account. Given the multitude of costs in a business, it will be easier. Uh, it would be an easier analysis if you are able to limit your sensitivity to fewer uh, but larger variables in the equation. Given certain revenue scenarios, the goal would be to understand the behavior of the underlying costs and to establish acceptable operating ranges. And along with those, the thresholds that will trigger an alarm. Great explanation, Steve. Now, there seem to be many different potential scenarios that could play out. Do you have any thoughts about how we might prepare for one or many of these different eventualities? What types of tools have you seen? other businesses use to help them track areas of concern and to trigger action? It's a great question, Joe. We definitely would like to see those financial sensitivity analyses link to actions. 
Once you complete the analyses and identify the critical areas on which to focus, you can set thresholds for each of these areas that will trigger actions. For each of these critical areas, you can pre-identify actions, possibly at varying degrees. For example, at X, take the following actions. At Y, take these additional actions. The impact of X or X and Y provide an expected offset. This offset is estimated ahead of time and fed into the analysis. The key here, though, is to assemble teams, challenge them with the needed result, and empower them to identify the actions to achieve the result. The teams present their recommendations and the impacts of these actions. Business teams review these actions, make sure there are no unintended consequences, and validate the results. Then these actions are loaded into the plan. There should be savings opportunities across a multitude of areas. Each set of actions triggered in response to which thresholds are crossed. So really, what we're talking about is, is a, a list of, of measures with thresholds. And when that business measure crosses that threshold, then it puts action into course. That makes a lot of sense, Steve. Now, what are some of the best practices you have seen companies deploy to help them prioritize cost opportunities and to provide focus to the removal of costs? Sure thing. This gets into a little more detail about how these teams that have been tasked with these areas of concern drill into the actions to remove costs. Once the teams are identified, and leadership established. If you think about leader, it could be um, an assigned leader, uh, maybe a process owner or a support engineer of some type. Uh, they pull in other uh, subject matter experts, people that they need to be part of that team. They go to work looking for savings opportunities in these areas that they've been assigned. There are many different approaches here. Which one works best depends on the type of problem to solve. If the challenge is a product related issue, design, material, maybe specification. This is more of a product engineering challenge. If the issue is production losses or manufacturability, these could be where your production engineers and or product engineers dive in. You know, bring those product engineers along because maybe there's some kind of design change they can make to help the product be more manufacturable. If the issue is more of an indirect material or even a support related cost to the business, these could be good fodder for uh, something in my past called cost action teams. Uh, when I worked with GE, we actually called this activity, they were called indirect bullet trains. Essentially, these teams need to figure out whether they can either reduce consumption in some way, lower the cost of goods, find alternative products uh, or replacement goods, um, in order to seek to eliminate use. For example, can we eliminate or reduce the use of printers? Uh, can we reduce the consumption of electricity? In my past, worked in a, um, a process industry and and uh, we, a very large part of our expenses were, were for electricity and, and being able to control the consumption of electricity without affecting the process was, was a big uh, money saver. Uh, lower shipping costs, uh, either by uh, consolidating shipments better or finding uh, lower rates, um, reduce the level of packaging. Uh, be sure to test this, of course, because you don't want your products to drive to your customer's damage. But there are just a lot of places in business where you can um, attack costs and, and find ways to save uh, money. And these are just a few examples. The aim, though, is to create a culture which challenges all costs and looks for better ways to deliver goods and services. The activities of these groups is collected, rolled up, and opportunities are prioritized. So think about a, a, a span of, of teams uh, that are looking across your business and they come up with ideas and you bring this all together so you can see the summation of all of this activity. Um, and of course, it's aligned with these critical areas of focus um, and us also in, in other low hanging fruit or opportunities to reduce costs to help the bottom line. This overall summary should be centrally managed. You wanna be able to roll this up and see the impact of, of these activities across your business. Um, and then of course, you wanna track the results and you wanna celebrate the results. These teams work hard to, to deliver these savings um, and nothing uh, helps to, to read more of this than uh, taking the time to celebrate your teams. And I think the other thing is, is it's also a best practice that once cost savings are realized, you got to adjust the budget so that the gains can't be redeployed. 
don't let the gains go to waste. Great, great uh, closing remarks, uh, Steve. Don't let the gains go to waste. Very excited to have you on this uh, podcast, Steve. Thank you so much for your interesting points and content. Uh, it was very insightful, very helpful for the listeners and myself to learn more about uh, what strategies can be um, deployed in these situations. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Joe. As you can see, Steve has a lot of insights and knowledge about uh, measures and best practices which can be deployed in uh, situations like today. I would like to uh, invite you to follow Steve on LinkedIn and uh, follow his uh, activity and stay up to date with his communications. I also would like to in invite you to uh, join our next podcast with Jim Holman to uh, learn more about his perspective from uh, a business processing side, how we can uh, monitor and take advantage of the current uh, developments. My name is Joe Hainer and I'm a partner with Jerry Beckert. Thanks for listening and looking forward to connecting soon.